what is up guys welcome back to the keep it hoop youtube channel today we are going to look at dacian nix highly touted point guard on the g league ignite team now we've already done a couple of videos on some of the g league ignite prospects i think two videos on jonathan kaminga and i was really impressed with him his ability on defense as well as his ability to play out the mid post and then just the athleticism we all expected and then jalen green the video I did on Tuesday kind of just talked about what he can work on, some of the things I liked, his potential, um, you know, some of the things he did on defense, which we want to see more of consistently, his jump shooting and just overall game, breaking him down. So, yeah, just go check those videos out if you haven't yet. Before we get started, if you could like, subscribe, share and comment, it would mean a lot. And yeah, with that out the way, let's get started. So I wanted to give a little background on Dacian Nix and just talk about my thoughts on him before we go down to the actual film. He's averaging about 11.5 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game. He's shooting around 32% from 3 and I think 42.5 or so from the field. So he's having a solid season. He's had a couple of good games. I think he's coming off of a, a where he had about, a, I think, a 23-point game, 8 rebounds, 6 assists game on the 13th and for the 12th um but yeah he's he's having a solid season nothing crazy he's definitely not playing as well or has or impressed me as much as Kamenga, and not even as much as jalen green that being said he has shown some impressive moments i think he played really well in his first game as well and at a you know he's a 6-4 point guard so he has pretty good size but he lacks elite athleticism now he's not a bad athlete but you're going to see in this video that he has the ability to get past guys at times, but he also sometimes struggles to get people get past people consistently. And if he's up against guys with long wingspans or who are very athletic, I think finishing at the rim will also provide a bit of a challenge. And the jump shot still isn't fully there. Now he makes a three in this game and he definitely improved as a shooter since high school. I know their scouting report on him in high school was that he couldn't really shoot. And in his senior year, he improved a bit. And he's continuing to show that he's progressing in the right direction. But again, he's shooting around 32% from the three. So not a great shooter. And that's something that he's probably going to need to work on. And obviously in today's game, that's a big skill set to have. But especially as a as a a point guard that isn't an elite athlete. I think that's something that he can definitely work on and, and benefit from. He is pretty crafty. I will give him that, whether it's finishing around the rim, getting to the free throw line, which is a very important skill to have, and just finding guys in general off the pass. He does have pretty good vision. He's able to get guys the ball at the right time in their shooting pocket. So so that is a skill he has. And, and obviously, as a bigger point guard, passing is going to be something he can definitely use and look over guys if they put a smaller guard on him i do think that along with his size and his craftiness maybe further on down the road because it is something that takes time but learning to play out of the mid post kind of like chris paul andre miller chauncey billups all those guys are really good at playing out the mid post for point guards that's something that could help him a lot as well and i know he's not ben simmons type tight right he's not Cade cunningham but it, it, he is still a bigger point guard um, compared to guys like Steph and Dame and CP3. So, you know, there's definitely some things he does well and, and definitely some things he needs to work on. But I think it also sucks for him to a degree. It's unfortunate because he's coming out in a draft where Cade Cunningham and Jalen Suggs are on the board. And those two are almost a lock-in for top five picks. Cade Cunningham is pretty much the consensus at number one right now. And those two guys have both pretty high floors and pretty high ceilings. And, you know, to be in a class where the two guys in your position above you are very, very elite talent, you know, he's going to get overlooked at times. But maybe that helps him to just kind of go under the radar and work on his game. Because, again, I do think he does do some things really well. So we'll start off right here. Um, he, he does play north south, which I like a lot. You know, a lot of these clips I'm going to I'm going to point out, but he plays, you know, straight line drives and just attacking the rim. And that's good to see for someone who's not only young, but also just not the most athletic. You want to still be attacking the rim. And there's ways to do that, whether it's angling your body, using your offhand well, which he does do pretty well. And, you know, a lot of times guards get stuck playing east-west, and that just makes it so much easier to defend you. So he's a bit able to attack the rim here. But 
isn't able to finish. Maybe gets a little bit fancy with the jelly finger roll, um, but he battles for the ball back. And that's another thing I saw in a lot of these these clips and, and some of the other games from Knicks. He's he's very aggressive, not scared of anyone, and he just fights, man. He fights for the ball and, and isn't afraid. And you and you like to see that from from your point guard, who's going to be you know the floor general for your team and one of the leaders. So definitely definitely a positive there. So he's also a pretty good rebounder. We talked about him averaging six a game, and he's just not afraid of the contact. You know, he loses the guy a bit there, but goes up and gets it. He just, you know, isn't afraid of the physicality, really fights for the ball. And we even see this on the offensive end, but he, he's really just a ball hunter. And um, we see here, really good play. Finds Jared Jack in the corner. And we'll run this back a little bit. So, you know, we talked about him not having elite athleticism, but he's still able to get past guys to a degree. You know, again, playing north-south, you love to see it. Gets past this guy, right? And then the fact that he draws four guys here, right? This guy's on him, his initial man. This guy helps, this guy helps, and then Jared Jack's guy helps all the way off. So he's getting four guys in the paint with that drive. Now, it's pretty bad defense, but still, you know, saw that the defender was a little bit out of it, is able to attack right away, and then he gets really creative with this pass here. And look, jump passes aren't good. Now I was guilty of doing this when I played a lot too. But as a shorter guard, sometimes you just have to find creative ways to get the ball to shooters. You know, there's a bunch of athletic guys, guys with long wingspans, and you have to be able to find the crevices and the spaces to, to just make the plays, right? And again, it's not always the best idea. So don't get in the habit of making jump passes. But he gets in a situation here where he finds the, the really hard angle um, at first with a guy right here, but makes a really accurate on target pass look at that right in the shooting pocket and i can't stress how important this is because no matter how wide open you are someone passes it above your head or at your ankles if you have to set and shoot it you're just out of your motion you're out of the shots you usually practice and it can it lowers the percentages that of your shot going in uh drastically it's been proven before right so to be able to get it in the shooting pocket and on time it's a some it's a skill that not all even nba point guards have right now right Guys like Chris Paul, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, they're all really good at doing this. And it seems like such a simple skill, yet it's its not always there. So I did like the fact that he's able to do that. Gets it to Jared Jack on target, right in the shooting pocket, even with a guy right in his face. So really good pass here. And uh, again, the, the the creativity and and the passing is, is, is probably his strong suit from what I've seen so far. I like the defensive effort here coming down, getting the block. That's going to count as a rebound. And then again, just always having his head up, the vision, gets it to Kaminga where only he can get it. So the passing, again, showcasing it there. Another time where he's able to get past this guy. I think teams are going to try to pressure him a bit because he's not the elite athlete. right? He's not Ja. He's not the old Russell Westbrook or John Wall or Derrick Rose. So he's not always going to be able to blow past guys, but he has, I think he's showing consistently enough that he can at certain times against certain defenders. And again, granted, this is the G league and not the NBA, you know, he's showing that he can at times blow past people. And he has a pretty nice finish here, double clutch um, with the defender there. Again, a lot of these finishes aren't going to be super athletic. He's not going to be, you know, crazy reverses or up and unders or junk dunking over people. But again, you just have to be crafty and find your ways to score because two points is two points and it, it might not look the best all the time, but just got to be effective. He ends up getting a foul call here, but I do want him to be a little bit more secure with the ball in a close game. I know it's only the second quarter, but you don't want to ever be fumbling the ball around half court. Now, this hand was not something I ever really saw him having a trouble with. So I don't think it's, it's really something to worry about, but um, you know, again, it's just little things that you want him to clean up here and there, especially if you want him to be, if you're going to draft him in the lottery, someone you want to be a point guard of your future, you want him to be pretty secure with the ball. And we talked about the, the willingness to go in and just get the rebounds even on the offensive end. So this is a situation here where he's not able to blow past this guy, but again, he's able to use his, his dribbling stays pretty low. I like, I really like right here what he does with the offhand. If you can't see it with the right hand, they're kind of trying to hand check him a bit and he's using his right hand to just slap him away. So that does two things. One, it obviously stops the defender from hand checking you. But two, if you're able to slap the defender's arms away and you're not doing so, so drastically where you get called for a charge, 
a lot of times you're then able to throw the defender off balance a bit. Because if you're trying to stick with someone, right, imagine you're in a defensive stance, you're guarding someone, and you're trying to just stick with them using your hands, and they slap it away, that can just throw you off balance a little bit. And those are the kind of things where if you're not the most athletic, you can use that creativity and that craftiness to get just enough space and separation for you to get a shot for yourself or someone else. So I do really like um, his maturity there and just knowing how to manipulate the defender and using his offhand to do so. You know, and again, we see the lack of separation he can get because even after that, right, he can't get a lot of separation on the shot and ends up making but um, having to settle for a pretty tough running fadeaway shot. I will say that part of this is his teammate's fault. Pretty bad spacing here, right? Because as he's driving, for some reason, for some reason, right, Nix is driving because this guy cuts in and he says, all right, let me get in your way, man. Let me, I see you're going to the rim. Let me meet you there for some reason. Because if he was able to stay out here, then I actually think Nix is able to find a way to get to the rim. And I don't think he ends up getting too much space either, but I think he gets an easier shot for himself. Um, you know, another right read, because you can have more than one right reads, but another correct read he could have made was the pass to Jared Jack. And you see again here, right? He's putting pressure on the defense. You get rid of those. There's the initial defenders here, and he's putting pressure on the defense. And I know this guy's cutting, but there's... All five guys are engaged on what Nix is doing. So, again, I know I keep stressing this, but even without the elite athleticism, which ideally you want to see in a point guard these days, but even without it, he's finding ways to get to his spots and then finding ways to either get himself a shot or get himself or, or his teammates a shot off of that. So that is something I like, again, remaining crafty and creative in, in finding these spaces. He showcases a three-point shooting here, and I know I stress this in a lot of my other videos, but... His willingness and confidence to shoot it, that's the big thing. For younger guys, I just want to see you be confident in shooting it. His form looks fine. Able to tack off the catch here. And again, the creativity, man. I like that pump fake. You go and get the drive. I don't necessarily love that he stopped here. And we, we kind of talked about this in the Jalen Green video. But anyways, you know, he catches it and he makes the right read. Guy's a little bit off balance on the closeout, right? So what he does is just tacks immediately, right? So really nice read there. Able to attack him. Now, I think this is just a weird spot to cut or to, to well, one, it is a weird spot for this guy to cut. Not sure what he's doing. Um, I think the timing was a little off because ideally you want to see him just being out here. But anyways, I don't like that he picked the ball up here just because you can't really get anything out of it. If the defender was smart and didn't bite for the pump fake, you're now in an area where you can't get yourself or anyone else a shot really and you're kind of just stuck with the ball, picking up your dribble in a really weird spot. Ideally, if you can't get the shot you want here, I think you kind of just dribble it all the way out and you reset. Or again, we talked about this Jalen Green, but you can kind of just dribble, curl around, and maybe go for a floater in the paint. But nonetheless, he finds himself like in a kind of weird position, but again, using the pump fake, getting to the free throw line. doesn't matter how you do it. And I'm not saying go out there and flop, but getting to the free throw line is, is a very useful skill to have. Your shot might not be falling, but if you're able to get to the line, you can always provide value for your team. And along with, again, the passing that and rebounding that he does bring. A little bit of a broken play here. But, man, just finds ways to get to the rim. And I know it's not necessarily pretty all the time, but if, if it, you know, two points is two points, man. So I, I do like the way, um, you know, he's, he's getting these. Again, just finding the open guys. From, you know, just from everything we've seen, I, I just like his craftiness he's not someone i don't think you can just go plug in and be like that's our franchise guy i think the the lack of athleticism and the lack of shooting is a bit concerning but i do think that he is he still makes good plays and he's able to find ways to get to his spots now that's going to be something we have to keep an eye on because while the g league is still filled with talented players and guys who are still athletic. The NBA is a whole nother level, right? So is he going to be able to continue to find his spots and be, you know, is his craftiness going to work on those guys? Those are things we have to keep an eye on. I do think his stock, again, would be higher if he were in a different class that weren't with, you know, that wasn't with Cade Cunningham and Jalen Suggs. Again, I think he'll be solid. I don't think he's a franchise changer, but you know, again, the G League Ignite system, I really like it. I, I hope it continues and, and we'll see throughout the season. We'll monitor the situation and see 
how he does because you know he he's had some good games, but he's also had some really quiet games where he hasn't even reached double digit scoring. So I think he's a work in progress. Um, I don't know how high his ceiling is, but you know, solid player. I don't think he'll go as high as Kaminga or or Green, obviously, but you know, I think he's definitely a guy that if you're maybe lower in the lottery or or maybe looking for a solid a good backup or you know you want someone who's just under the radar might be a solid choice but yeah that does it for today hope you guys enjoyed the video we will probably have another video tomorrow just um talking about some of the games over the weekend um again if you haven't yet do like follow subscribe share comment do all those things mean a lot um follow us on our social media pages on instagram it is keep underscore it underscore hoop and on twitter it is keep it hoop blog yeah Stay tuned uh, for more content. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.